In this video, we're going to talk about the statistics and probability topic of standard deviation. And when we're talking about standard deviation, we can think of that as the spread of the numbers within a data set. So we have a formula that we can use to calculate standard deviation. When we have a lot of numbers that we're using that can get a little complex, we can use our calculator also. It can do that when we enter a data set. In most cases for the ACT, we are given questions that we're able to almost visually inspect the data and be able to tell some things about the standard deviation, how the spread of the data looks. And we can usually do that with these type of questions we see. But we're going to take a look at both cases so you will be prepared and in just enough to know so that you can answer questions, hopefully. So when we're talking about a population standard deviation, the entire population, we have a set of procedures that we'll follow to calculate that. First of all, we need to find the mean, and then we will square the difference of the mean in each data point. So we're taking each data point, subtracting it from the mean and squaring it, and then we'll find the mean of those squared values, take the square root, and that's how we'll find the population standard deviation. We can also find the sample standard deviation calculated only when you have a subset of the data. And to do that, the sum of the squared differences, what we found above, is divided by n minus 1, and n is the sample size. Trying to get a measure of how close the data points are to me, the mean, that is our main point of standard deviation. When we start plugging the values into the formulas that we looked at on the previous slide, that can get a little complex. It can introduce some error if we're not careful. Usually, again, what we'll see on the ACT, we can do some visual inspection and answer some questions. Looking at the spread of the data is going to help you a lot. So take a look at this example. We say look at these two sets of test scores that both have an average of 95. Which set has a smaller standard deviation? So we're told some important information here. We could calculate it, but each of these two data sets has an average of 95. Which one's going to have a smaller standard deviation? Well, it's going to be the set that is close, has values that are closer to 95, and that would be set 1 having a smaller standard deviation. You could plug these numbers into your, your calculator. Your calculator probably has a function that will even calculate standard deviation. We're looking for the smaller one, but we can also just visually inspect this as well. Let's take a look at this ACT type question. If each of the data sets below has a mean of 5, which data set has the largest standard deviation? So we're given some important information here that each data set in choice A through E has a mean of 5. Like we talked about before, you could punch all these values into your calculator and not only would it give you the mean, but you could also find out the standard deviation of each one of these and compare and find the one that has the largest standard deviation. But I want to show you how you can visually look at these values and try to come up with the answer quicker because that's what we're trying to do is to be able to answer these questions correctly and quickly. First, when I'm glancing through the answer choices, I notice first that that choice E that has values of 5 for each entry into the data set, that set is going to have a standard deviation of 0. Every value is equal to the mean, so when we subtract each of those terms from the mean, you get 0. So you can eliminate choice E. All the other options are going to have standard deviations greater than 0. Next, I notice from choice D, when I look at the values there of 6, 5, 6, 5, and 3, two of those values are 5 itself, and then 6 is very close to 5, and 3 is only two units away from 5. So that's going to be a relatively small standard deviation. Now let's see how that compares to any of the other. When I just glance at those choices, these values are closer than any of the others. So all A, B, or C, each one of those are going to be larger than the standard deviation of D. Now let's take a look at choices A and C. A and C have some similar data values, some of the same data values. 
So when I look at A and C, they both have two data values that are one. So we can almost think about eliminating those. Also notice that A has five, has that value of five, and we know that that almost cancels out, making it a difference of zero. So we're only really looking at the two nines in A, which are four units away from five, and in there with C, we have both three, which is two units away, and you have eight, which is three units away, and then 12, which is seven units away. Given that you have the two values of nine and then the three, eight, and 12 in C, C is gonna come away with the larger standard deviation so now we need to compare B and C because we've eliminated all our other choices. They have smaller standard deviations than B and C. So when we look a little bit closer at B and C, notice that we don't have the exact values, but very similar. Notice B has one, two, and three, and C has one, one, and three. Those are very close, but we can almost eliminate those because they're so close in doing our visual inspection. So in B, when we eliminate one, two, and three, we still have a two and a 17 left. And with C, we have eight and 12. But if you'll notice, again, with our mean being five, that two is three units away from five, the mean, and eight is three units away from five. They're just in different directions. But remember from our calculation, we're gonna square that. And so any negative would become a positive when you square that. So it really doesn't matter if the value is greater or less than the mean. So essentially two and eight is gonna turn out to be the same when we're calculating the standard deviation, the, the value that we're looking at. So now we're just down to having to look at a 17 in B and 12 in C. So we look which one is a greater distance away from five, and obviously it's the 17. So that's gonna be answer choice B, and that's going to end up giving us the larger standard deviation. You can put all these values in your calculator and solve for standard deviation or do this visual inspection. The more you do it, the more examples like this, you'll get better at it. And also the ACT is going to give you options that are a little bit easier to visually inspect, if you can visually inspect. If you can't do that, we're going to default to calculating the values. But give these a try and see, and you've got some more practice problems that you can practice this with.